Hello, Pulp Pounds. So you may have noticed I've uh, been relegated upstairs. It's fine. It's all good. It's in fact I've been relegated for good reasons. Uh, my lad's come to stay with me. He's studying so, and he's doing computer things that I don't quite understand. So he's got all his computer things set up in the living room for his lectures and studies and all that. So yeah, if I want to make videos, I have to come upstairs, <laughs> which is fine. So it's for good reasons. Um, so book covers, it's about time we talked about book covers because I honestly think they're as equally important as the contents of the book. If there's if there's a novel I really want or a collection of stories, if there's one that is uh, all right cover but it's not great, as in illustration, I'm not on about condition, or there's one that's beautiful that is perfect design and illustration, then I will pay a bit more and get the uh, the one that is more beautiful. So yeah, talking about book covers, I guess, well, I think that the most important and one of the most prolific genre book cover illustrators is Bruce Pennington. If you've been in a second-hand bookshop over the past 30 years and looked at any kind of sci-fi, fantasy or horror books, you're going to have spotted a few Bruce Pennington covers. So he was born in Somerset and then went to art school, moved to London to art school in the 60s. Um, he left art school in 1967 and uh, actually applied to Hammer Studios to be a makeup artist, which he'd never done any makeup. And I think if I lived near some Hammer production offices at the right time, I would have applied. <laughs> because that would have been awesome, wouldn't it? To get to play with Gore and Dracula all day. So when he left art school, he worked for a company that designed uh, movie posters, just for, just for local cinemas and stuff like that. And then in 1967, he started touting his his art portfolio around to publishers um, and one publisher that was interested so he was uh, Bruce Pennington was was still freelance at this point and pretty much stayed freelance for for the the majority of his career but he took it to Panther took his portfolio to Panther who uh, gave him the job of doing the cover for uh, Vladimir Nabokov's The Defence, um, the same chap that wrote Lolita. I, I haven't really read either. It doesn't look like there's either going to be monsters, explosions or car chases. And I have a short and uh, low <laughs> attention span. So if I don't get like a monster or a beastie, or a car chase within a few pages. The old uh, the old brain box switches off. And it was it was this relationship with uh, with Panther that that gave Bruce Pennington such a strong start in his career. Um, he did do some absolutely staggering and beautiful work at Panther. Um, and he'd he'd been working at Panther for for a little while, obviously still as a freelance, when he came to the attention of some of the chaps at New English Library. Um, and he kind of bounced bounced between the two, so the the, the first horror stuff he did for New English Library was uh, for a couple of anthologies by Peter Haining. Um, the Pennington did some really amazing uh, wraparound covers for so you could open the flaps of the book and you've got one complete rectangular illustration I love that it 
I never do that with older books because it could cause damage, but it's just nice to see. Um, a new English library went on to do uh, a lot of a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. I mean, that was that was pretty huge at the time. And as regular viewers will know, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of sci-fi and fantasy. And if, actually, if I had the room, which it's quite apparent that I don't have a lot of room <laughs> left in my house, if I had the room to buy books that I was never going to read, just to own that, the the illustration and the graphic design of the cover, I would buy Bruce Pennington books. I just don't have the room to buy books I know I'm never going to read. He is best known for his uh, sci-fi and fantasy. But I first came across his work uh, when I was a lot younger, when I was uh, a very fierce collector of Panther books. In fact, for Panther, he did uh, the covers of two anthologies of stories by Frank Belknap Long. Um... And he eventually got a letter from from Long saying, you know, there's been a lot of editions and collections of my stories and nobody's quite grasped what I've been trying to say in my fiction like you have. Which is quite a quite an accolade. But I think he he really made a name for himself with uh, the New English Library version of Frank Herbert's Dune. Partly because it sold so well and so many people got to see that kind of work. And he continued to do a lot of Frank Herbert's uh, covers for New English Library. Um, and I don't want to take away any credit to him because his cover for Dune was just beautiful again it's not one of my favorites but the cover is stunning and I, I i do think that's that's kind of what gave him the gave him the push although he was already pretty big by then of course his work's been used on book covers but a lot of that's been reused on uh record covers as well he's done a lot of record covers mainly in the heavy metal rock type genre what what Bruce Pennington does is one thing that I love that he does is he takes an unusual colour not necessarily a, a strange and bizarre colour but a lot of a lot of horror book covers especially from the early 70s they're dark and they've got uh, a, a across different publishers they all seem to have or a lot of them seem to have a similar style what Bruce Pennington would do is just kind of have a huge colour palette that's all different shades of one bold bright colour and go with that and do do the bulk of the cover using the different shades of one really vivid and bright colour which you don't tend to see a lot, especially in horror book covers. He also, and it kind of works for me, he also injected like an element of fantasy into his horror book covers. They're not straight up horror. Um, but there's something, there's something mysterious and exciting about them he kind of captures all sometimes he captures like a moment of stillness maybe after something really dramatic and fierce has occurred or sometimes he'll capture that moment just before that that event occurs whether it's in the story or just his interpretation of 
how that story made him feel and what he wants to use to represent that story. He's he's still going today. He's retired now. Um, and he... I mean, if you're interested, check out... He's got a website. Uh, I th I'll put a link to it in the description. And he sells prints... He sells uh, original work. He does still do some commissions, but because of who he is and his calibre and pedigree, they are very, very, very expensive, and so they flip in should be for the amount of hours he must pour into them. So if I've piqued your interest for a bit more Bruce Pennington, just just get on Google and have a little look. There's all sorts. Or go on his website and check the links section. There's some links to websites that are literally just cover and cover and cover and cover. And the it's beautiful to look at. I wish I had a bit more room. So I could buy some of his covers that, like I said, I don't intend to read. But yeah, so that's Bruce Pennington. A little bit about him. Um, I, my next few videos, I do think, are going to be up in my bedroom. So I shall try and find... I was going to say I'm going to try and find a corner that's not cluttered with old toys and old video game stuff, but... It's not going to happen. Thank you for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video.